Hello and welcome to the other Saturday podcast for a brand new episode this week uh, where we're going to be giving our SPFL 2022-23 predictions for the, the season ahead. It's start day uh, this weekend, uh, which is very exciting, obviously, to get everything back underway, get football back to <clears throat> normality. It's been a, it's been a long uh, summer without it, so good to get it back now. Um, and now we're going to give our thoughts on, on who's going to win the league, who's going to get relegated, where we see everybody placing in between. If you could uh, like, subscribe, uh, share about for us, very much appreciated. And let us know in the comments who, who you think is going to win the league and or get relegated and everything in between uh, that this season. First off, then, we'll go right into it. Um, 12th position. Uh, I have put my first uh, selection. I've put St. Johnston. Uh, I just don't feel like St. Johnston have really improved on what they they had last season. Um, obviously, a very poor campaign for them. I just don't feel they've really replaced the, the main players that um, that they lost all the, the a couple of seasons ago. Uh, Ali McCann and, and Jason Kerr, who are big, big players for them. I don't think they've really replaced them. But they have got a fucking beautiful kit, by the way. Can I say that? That is an absolute screamer of a kit. Um, last season, obviously, finishing 11th, as I said. Mm-hmm. And Cummins have got Ryan McGowan coming in centre half. Jamie Murphy, if he hubs, could be decent if he stays fit. Graham mm-hmm. Carey, if he CSK, Sophia, um, attacking midfielder, Adam Montgomery on loan. If he sell, I think we saw him at Aberdeen last season as well. Dre Wright, back to St. Johnson from Hibs, and Andy Considine for Aberdeen. So they've done all right in the business front with, with uh, incomings, but losing Callum Hendry, who was pretty much the their only striker that was scoring goals last season. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jamie McCart, another stalwart of that defence is away. Uh, Craig Bryson, Sean Rooney, to big players for him in the, in that big season where they won the two cups. So mm-hmm. I, I really don't see this season going well for St Johnson, and especially with them in the the Premier Sports Cup as well. Just earlier on this season, getting beat off and in Athletic, I think kind of spells um, everything yeah, that's to come for me. No, listen, I had them down there last season. I just fought after what a fantastic double run in the cup for them um, that they're going to do so well. Agree with you on the kit, though. That is a very nice kit. Um, but no, I just had really... I didn't have any faith in them last season and this season again. I, I thought they were shocking um, last season, but this season I don't think they'll be anything special as well. I do think they'll be down there fighting for the relegation, as you say. Lost big players for them. Um, you look at Sean Rooney as well. He's away to... Was it Henry with Brown in it? So nah, Fleetwood. Really but also signing <clears throat> players like Jamie Murphy, who can be decent, probably do a wee decent job for him. Um, and obviously caused in and what have you there. So I know it's... Is, is that boy for Celtic on loan or Rangers fan? I couldn't tell you, I don't know. I'm pretty sure... I know, it doesn't matter. But um, no, I've got them down there as well, mate. I don't think they'll be, they'll be as successful as they've been beforehand. Nah, I just don't, I just don't feel like their team really... I just can't see them pushing for anything other than fighting relegation this season, to be honest with you. Um, and it could spell the end of Callum Davidson as well. I know fans aren't going to accept, just because they won two Cups two seasons ago now, except mm. being down there fighting for relegation every season. So we'll see how they go. I'd, I personally, I can't see them staying up this season. I thought they were really lucky last season again because some of the football they played at the times was abysmal uh, last year. Um your pick though, you've you've went bold, and you've I went uh, last season's sixth place team, Ross County. Mm-hmm. I could say they overachieved last year massively. I think everybody had them down there at the start of the season, going to be fighting relegation. But you've got them back down there this year. I just think with the loss, as I say, Charles Cook and who was the boy that they had on loan was it for Watford as well? Yeah, uh, Hungbo as well. I I doing a business for them. Uh, so I just had for me, I I can't see them. Staying in the league, I think they're massive losses for them. But I'm looking at some of the three <clears> signings that boy for Swansea is supposed to be a be decent, no bad player. It actually know. surprised me when I seen he had signed for um, uh, Ross County because Kyle. he came through it, came through at Liverpool's academy, and he was pretty highly rated there. Mm-hmm. Went and get that move to Swansea, maybe about four or five years ago. Doncaster, is he, was he no a city? I'm pretty sure he was a city. Aye, uh, uh, Jordy, who uh, he was a city youngster as well, winger. Uh, and you can see for the business, obviously. Losing Charles Cook is is massive because yeah. that's one of the top scorers in the league gone. Um, and they've lost Blair Spittle as well to Motherwell. But the players that they've brought in, you can see that the list goes on with how many they've brought in. They've brought in centre-mids, left-backs, left-wingers, right-wingers, a goalie, 
a striker uh, on loan for Southampton as well. So mm. never know. How, I well, obviously never know, not seen any of these players really play, but I mean for no. Ross County, uh, Malky McKay seems to get the best out of, yeah. out of the I mean, from last really, season. Really decent business with the players they brought in. Like, listen, I don't follow as you say all the time. I'm not really interested in any other team. Um, but I just I thought with the loss of Charles Cook and that boy had to be walked for I thought that's massive because how important they were to them last season. I just didn't think they would they would do much. But you never know, Jack. I, I was almost right with St Johnston. I could be almost right with Ross County this season, you never know. Nah, well as you see in the in the photo there as well, Ross Callahan still still at Ross County, a pretty decent player. But mm. I I think the the losses a a Charles Cook and, and Hungbo on the on the Right and left will be quite tough to replace, to be honest with you, even though they have brought in a lot of players. Um, Jordan White up front scored against us in every single fixture last season, uh, yeah, which is wild. Well. Uh, he's obviously going to be still there as well. So um, uh, it'll be interesting to see how Ross County do. I think they overachieved massively last season. Pushing for Europe was, was big for a team like Ross County. So mm. it'll be interesting to see if they can push on again because I think, um, I think maybe half the league is in that position where it could end up anywhere. It was tough to pick the bottom six, I feel, rather than the top six. Uh, but it's, it's the same all over, I think, with, with the league. It's tough to predict where any of these teams are going to, going to feature, as I say, because a lot of them are similar um, mm. in the sense that they can probably beat MD on their day, but at the same time, they're beatable. So, aye, it is. It's, it's difficult to predict, but I've just got Ross County. Uh, down at the bottom well we'll see where we end up uh, next May then uh, we are relegation candidates we'll and we'll see who's right there but uh, on to 11th then going to be fighting the, the playoff position uh, with, the, with the championship runner I've got St Mirren I just feel that since Jim, Jim Goodwin left last season uh, they brought in Stephen Robinson obviously and I, I don't think they really done too well at all obviously it wasn't his team um, but I, I just don't really see much for St Mirren this season uh, to be honest with you it was, as I say it was tough to pick I had to put somebody there and I felt like St Mirren were maybe the weakest out of, out of the lot um, Keanu Bacchus Ryan Strain uh, a right back and a centre defensive midfielder there on free contracts Mark O'Hara as we know from Motherwell Declan Gallagher for Aberdeen um, and then Trevor Carson for Dundee United as well so seems like you've been putting a lot of ex-Motherwell players there isn't it? that's Pretty much been the the whole thing with Stephen Robinson coming back there. I think he's just tried to build up my little team that he had. Uh, and then the, looking at their outgoings as well, losing Conor McCarthy, who was uh, a part of that defence uh, over the past couple of years, Jack Anik away to Cardiff as yeah, well. That's so, a good move for him, man. Um, they've not really lost too much, but um, I just feel like they struggled last year, and I yeah. think that will continue. Uh, it's just, is Alan Poor away back to Kilmarnock? He's away back to Kilmarnock as well. Just yo yo. that? You get them relegated and then you you leave them and then you go back to them because they're back in the Premier. Shit, that's it's a bit dodgy that for me. No, no. Um, so I I can't really see much for for St. Mern this season. Um, I I just don't think the squad is is that good. I think they I think they will be down there with with mm. St. Johnston definitely. Um. You have got St Johnston though, as you say, fighting down there uh, as still well. Going to be down there. As I say, mate, they're still going to be down there. I don't think. You know I mean, they were lucky <clears> enough to get relegated. I thought they should have been relegated, but um, I just honestly, I think they'll be down there again. I just don't think they're good enough at all. As you say, they were shocking last season. Um, one or two decent players signing for them, but yeah, again. It's the kit that stands out for me when I think he's a Johnson this season. That is a nice kit, the more and more look at it. Yeah, it's an absolute screamer of a kit, by the way. Like, oh, just uh, beautiful in the kit department, but on the pitch, mm. I, as we see, I think we both agree uh, it's not going to be a good season for St. Johnson, yeah. but we'll, we'll see. Uh, on the 10th position, uh, then firstly, I've got Ross County actually down there as well. Um, I think yeah, the loss of Charles Cook and, and just the way they sort of they fade, fade away last season after getting top six. I don't think they won a game. Uh, when that push for Europe came around, so I just don't feel like Ross County are going to be up there again, to be honest with you. I think uh, they'll be back down fighting um, in the bottom half of the league this season. And, and we're saying they've got plenty of, plenty of players, obviously, in, but it's all about getting them into the team and integrated and working together because uh, losing... As you say, we're repeating ourselves. Charles Cook's obviously a massive, massive miss uh, for him. So, I, 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 I can't see Ross County doing much. Uh, but you've you've went kind of bold as well. You've no, went. I'm sorry. You've I went Motherwell. 
after that loss in Europe, they deserve to be relegated. I'm sorry. Um, I don't really rate these lot at all. Given somebody that we've had on the podcast before, um, giving him some stick for just trying to highlight the Scottish game. I can't support that. Uh, my man does well. I was back here at Future Adventures, enjoyed the videos, but nah, these lot are scum to me. I don't really care, honestly. And I look, look forward to playing these lot and getting a, a wee 10 now at home. Um, I can't, I just, I can't stand them after hearing what's uh, going on with that and obviously that result. Um, but nah, I just, I hope they do. They, they're just shocking, mate. I just, I don't rate these lot at all. And I'm seeing other players going back to command like here. Do you know what I mean? It's not really been a, a busy window for them. Um, no, it's... back if they want. I don't know if he's still where he is, but they can take him back if they no, want. No, he's away at Hartlepool, so thank- thankfully got him off the books. Yeah, but exactly. uh, looking at Motherwell last season, obviously finished fifth. They were into the qualifying stages for the Conference League and ultimately embarrassed the Scottish game again uh, in Europe, uh, getting beat off Sligo Rovers at home. So um, I just looking uh, again at their incomings: Josh Morris for Salford, Blair Spittle, Paul McGinn. Doesn't really strike me with much um, intent to go and do even better or the same as, as last season. I thought they really got lucky with finishing fifth, to be honest with you. Um, I think they were lucky to be in there at that top yeah, six. So um, Losing Kane Woolery, will be happy to see the end as well after his two, well, I think he's only two goals for Motherwell were at Ibrox. Um, Liam Donnelly, a bit of Kilmarnock, uh, Marco Harris, we said to St Mern as well. So they've not been too active in the transfer department. They've kept uh, Kevin Van Veen, obviously, at the moment, mm. uh, who was pretty good for them last season. Um, Sean Goss, obviously, still there. Ross Tierney, Barry Maguire, and Beavis McGabby, and that. They've got, they've got a half decent team. I think they're maybe just a wee bit better than like your St Mirren's and that. But um, yeah, I, 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 I find it mental that they always finish as high up as they do. Uh, as, they, as they do. As I said, mate, it's what. One of the situations when they finish where they finish, where teams just capitalise on other teams' bad form. Um, you look at maybe was it them and Levy was it last season? Mm-hmm. Um, for the playoffs or whatever for the conference, I must rather have Livingston in Europe. I tell you what, they do a job compared to this mob. But I can't back them, as I say. Um, dirt on the shoe, as I like to call them. I'm just going to nickname them that. No, I'm only joking. I'm going a bit too far there. But uh, no, I've just got them finishing there, mate. Don't think they'll do much. No, nah, yeah. On the ninth, then I have actually got them as well. Just just moving on there as well. I've got Motherwell. Uh, I I just don't think um, I don't think they've improved enough. I think the the loss to Sligo Rovers again is just embarrassing. embarrassing. I think it might be a tale for for the season to come where Motherwell might overachieve, uh, underachieve. Sorry, uh, yeah. to where they were last season. Um, and I I just don't really see much in the way Motherwell weren't doing much to be honest. So I've got them at ninth position. Um, mm. And then returning the favour, we've both got kind of like similar teams down here. You've got St Mirren. All right, well, it's, listen, it's, I think it's between the two of them, definitely. Um, if you can hear Toby in the background, it's because Toby thinks St Mirren's winning the league. Um, he's yeah. going over this um, But no, I just I think St Mirren and Motherwell are going to be those kind of teams down there. And they're basically the same club with um, my man taking basically his Motherwell team back to St Mirren there. So I've got St Mirren there, mate. No, no, we've talked about them obviously with, with our transfer business and such. On the eighth position, uh, I've got Livingston last season just narrowly missed out in the top six, but I think they actually finished with more points uh, than, than maybe remember. Motherwell. When did you sign for Hartlepool? Hmm? I said, when did you sign for Hartlepool? Oh, I know, I know. They've, they've <laughs> loaned me out. I know, it's shocking, isn't it? Um, yeah, but David Martindale again. Goes again with his team, Livingston, the robust mm. team that nobody likes to play. Uh, I think that's goes for every team in the league, yeah, Rangers and Celtic. Mm. Always struggle uh, playing Livingston, a really well-drilled team. Um, and I think that's why they've done so well over the past couple of years with very limited um, transfer okay. budget and such. I think they've done well in terms of bringing good players in. And um, I think I, looking at their outgoings, obviously, I've went out and loaned to Hartlepool. <laughs> Uh, Craig Sibold's left, Jazzy Cabby on loan, Jacobs, McMillan, Riley, Alan Forrest, probably the biggest one out of the, of the bunch there. He uh, was a, a really big starter for them last year on that right hand side. He's went to the hearts. So uh, they've, they've still need to play somebody that looks at it because we're not bringing a right midfielder. But a mm. centre half, a left back, a right back, Ismail Gonzalez, who some might remember for his time at hearts. Um, centre attack midfielder and Shamal George who funnily enough 
uh, played with Liverpool, and uh, it was what I think it was Jurgen Klopp's first preseason. He played him up front as a goalkeeper, uh, so that's all I ever remember about Shamal George. <laughs> uh, so I their their incomings are, as such, but I I think they'll they'll be all right this season again. Livingston, I think they'll stay there or thereabouts, and and that I, I think maybe just going to miss out in the in the top six again. But uh, hopefully we can do the business against them on Saturday. That's the main thing uh, on the start of the season. Obviously Livingston first game of the season. Um, we'll see how that goes. And then you've you've went again. You've went at quite bold here. Dundee United for you. Uh, well, listen, look, I don't know. Uh, I'm going to raise some of these signings here. Stephen Fletcher, come on. No, I'm wrong. I don't know, mate. I just think it's, it's any of the teams could finish anywhere, in, you know what I mean, in the bottom half of the table. Um, but as I say, they're, they're all dodgy with us form. So not, not many of them are consistent. I mean, losing the keeper at Celtic, that's a massive one. We were, we were calling for him maybe to sign for us. Mm-hmm. Um that is a massive loss for Dundee, so you never know in that department they might concede more goals. Um, getting the boy from Man United. I think, that's, I think that's a huge signing, to be honest. Yeah, I, I have no uh, idea how they actually got that done. Uh, he was he was great last season. Uh, so, I mean, getting him done in the door for him, that seems like a decent bit of business. Um, did they know who was their manager? To the, uh, the so Jack, Jack Ross is the, the manager now. Jack Ross, aye. Uh, so, I mean, there's a decent manager there and potentially could get him finishing higher than Hibs this season. You never know him. Maybe bold be saying that, but uh, obviously I've got Hibs finishing higher than one this slice. But you never know mm. um, where they could finish. But I have got them sitting there, mate. I don't think that's a shocker at all. I I think they've um, unlucky to lose Benjamin Segrist, obviously, who they've had uh, to replace with Mark Romano Berecti, who I'll, I'll probably butcher that goal. bit for Central Coast Mariners. have got a new goalie in. Craig Sibble, mm. who was always pretty decent at Livingston. Dylan Levitt, I think, is one of the best signings of the whole SPFL this summer. I think getting him in for Man United for such a little fee, he's obviously a Wales international now as well, so I think that's a mm. good bit of business. Stephen Fletcher, although he's 35, he's been around the block. He'll still know where the goal is in, in Scotland. So, um, so wait, wait, wait a minute. That's another Welsh international playing in the Scottish League. I mean, we've got several over at Ibrox, so you never know. Business nah. could be done in future seasons. No, nah, we'll, we'll see what happens. But I think Jack Ross, with his, um, with his uh, experience with Hibs and that, he was always finishing third or fourth, getting him into right. cup finals, cup semi-finals. I think he'll take us on to this Dundee United team because Dundee United are all right. I think we struggled against them. Absolutely. Obviously, they beat us uh, in, at Tannadice and we struggled against them a lot of the time we played them. Uh, mm-hmm. Dundee United, a very robust side, can play good football uh, when needed as well. They got the results that they needed. And uh, they've got big qualifiers coming up in Europe as well, so hopefully uh, we'll see how they do. Hopefully an all Scottish team can do well in Europe. But hopefully. Um, aye, we'll wait and see. Um, on to number seven for the season, uh, I've got Hibs. Uh, I think we've both actually got Hibs here. Uh, for for seventh, uh, if I'm right, I I we both get hibs. So the thought process behind this one is <laughs> looking at the state of uh, how hibs are being ran at the moment. Lee Johnson obviously coming in, uh, a lot of a decent signings in there. Uh, David Marshall, uh, Jair Tavares, as you can see on the photo for Benfica, Ellie Johan for St Gallen, the striker on loan, Aidan McGeady, Marianne Cabraja for for Zagreb. And your boy for Leeds there, Kenna. Uh, they've brung in a lot of players. I've had to bring in a lot of players, obviously, because last season it was it was shocking for Hibs. Uh, wow. Last season we had an eighth finish. Uh, really done poor last season. Losing Josh Doig to Hellas Verona gets in a bit of funds, though. Three million for him. Jamie Murphy obviously left. Paul McGinn, Matt Macy. So they've brung in some some decent looking players by the looks of it. Um, I think your man there, Tavares, looks like the standout signing so far but uh, just the whole rigmarole with the Premier Sports Cup getting beat off Falkirk getting beat off uh, Morton it wasn't penalties there and then getting kicked out the the tournament because they fielded Rocky Bashiri and he was on a suspension so it's just been it's been a laugh at Hibs for the past couple of seasons uh, with the way they've been run but Lee Johnson seems to be a good manager he was at uh, that Sunderland team that went up last season I think he only left in January time so time will tell but I just don't think uh, Hibs will do that well. And clearly, you don't think Hibs will do that well this season either. No, not at all. Um, honestly, I, I know my boy Felix is signed for him. I wish him all the best. Um, seeing 
Josh Doig going to Italy, a league that seems to be poaching young Scottish talent. I um, mean, developing them well, but honestly, but what, what, you know, agree with me? Uh, Toby's not agreeing here, but no. Yeah. Uh, just to see the McGiddy and Davy Marshall um, playing for a slot, that's going to be one I'll be looking forward to this season. I hope we put five past him. Honestly, I cannot stand Davy Marshall, but overall, Hibs for me, are just, as I said, it'll be a difficult away game. He's always gives it away, and obviously at home, um, it'll be difficult as well. But I don't know, mate. They just seem a bit of a, a dodgy team this season, mate. I don't think they'll do anything special. Um, and I think they'll be probably finishing down eighth again. I can't see them finishing third or fourth. I really don't nah. see MD. You'll see my list, mate, but I really don't see MD chat. Hearts for me are the third best team in the league. Um, and I think uh, Aberdeen are going to do no bad this season, but Hibs here. But oh, looking, but looking where Hearts were like two seasons ago in the Championship and, and Hibs were obviously pretty decent with Jack Ross mm-hmm. and as we said, getting into cup finals, semi-finals, finishing fourth consistently um, and then look at them now, Hearts are Hearts are miles ahead of Hibs uh, It just seems the business they seem to be doing, as I say, getting a day was it Jack Ross when he had took them away, but was it a semi? Ah, well, they, they had just beat us um, in the, that semi and then the, the final was just around the corner, I think it was a week before the and game and they sacked him. I had to bring uh, Sean Maloney in. He struggles to... I can't remember the game I watched where they went extra time. Was it in penalties with a team? I can't remember who it was against. But just for seeing that, it seems like that's business-wise they're all over the place. But you never know with this new guy coming in. As you say, he's got experience what League One, Championship sort of kind of experience. Yeah, so you never know with him. But for me, I can't see him doing anything special. Nah, I think uh, I think the same as well. I just don't think uh, I think they've done some decent business. We're getting some decent players in, but I uh, I just don't think Lee Johnson will be the man to take Hibs forward. Really, I think they've really jumped the gun with sacking uh, Jack Ross the way they did. Because uh, I I just think I just still think that's weird. And then they brought in Sean Maloney, and he was only there for what two months or something. Um, now uh, Lee Johnson's got the chance to build his own team, but just the way it started off this season, I just. I feel we're in for more laughs with Hibs personally, but um, into the top six now. Uh, I've got last season's championship winners, Kilmarnock, notoriously mm-hmm. a horrible place to go, uh, as we always know. Similar to Livingston, um, Rugby Park always always throws up something for us. Um, mm-hmm. But looking at how they've came on, obviously Derek McInnes is a manager still, has is got them in a good space, I think. Uh, Jordan Jones, <laughs> former man of uh, Rangers, back uh, back where he started off, Kilmarnock, where he sort of made his name for himself. Liam Donnelly, as we spoke about in the Motherwell section there, uh, on a free. Uh, Alan Power back as well. And Lewis Mayo on loan for, for Rangers. So we'll see how he does, um, taking that jump up to hopefully playing consistent Premiership football to see if he's going to be ready um, maybe in next season still pretty young uh, to see if he's ready for that step up and that challenge but they've, their outgoings not not too, nothing too major they've done good business coming in uh, they've still obviously got uh, Kyle Lafferty um, Rory McKenzie as well uh, Lee Hodson another one uh, right back so uh, but with Derek McInnes I think just with how robust and how how tough they are to beat uh, I think Derek McInnes has been the master of getting Aberdeen he finished third near enough every yeah. every season apart from maybe a couple we finished third they finished second and yeah. I, I think he'll take us on to come on like this season in, in the league mm, definitely and I, I mean be a horrible place to go that park for me is honestly should be dug up and should be actually made a real um, football pitch but no especially with something like that but I mean he's got some quality players as I say Kyle Laffrey definitely will do the business for them put the ball in the net I'm just I'm looking at it and I'm seeing they've lost a keeper to Bradford Mark Hughes making big signings there it seems uh, no but no I'm, I'm hoping we see uh, Mayo there for, uh, for us we'll flick him on get consistent football um, at Kamala at the Premiership level that'll be good to see Jordan Jones coming in for him as well that's a it's a good bit of business for them probably shouldn't have left him to come to us to be fair um, that was a waste of money but uh, no. No, I think, as you say, they've got a really decent manager for this league. He knows the league inside and out. So I do expect them to be, for me, finishing 
high, similar to Hearts. When they came back up, I do expect them to be finishing high. It's kind of the sort of setting coming to Kilmarnock, I think. Yeah, we uh, obviously Steve Clark done so well, uh, got them into that European position, done done amazing and then the next season just relegated it's just crazy how it happens but I think Ico Marnock could be on for a good season uh, especially with Derek McInnes as a manager uh, for you then you've got you've got Livingston just breaking into the top six uh, which will will be where they want to be of course uh, in that top six uh, just uh, as we say missed out last season but what's your thoughts behind that one? Going back my man I can't I obviously they've sent you I'm going to Hartlepool best of luck son with the season ahead but uh, no I've got to back my man David Martindale I hope he can he can get it and actually he would make he do no bad in Europe. Do better than Motherwell anyway, I'll tell you that much. But they're a, they're a team for me that just it'd be nice to see them get European football. Do you know what I mean? Anytime you go and play them, everyone says the same thing. It's a difficult ground to go to, they're a difficult team to play. Um and I mean it's a an away ground that seems to want pictures with Rangers players already. I still can't get over that, man. You're supporting Livingston, you're asking Fashion Sakala for a selfie, I can't. <laughs> I can't get over it, but no, I've got them finishing there. I, mean, I just think, I mean, seven last season for them was pretty decent, just missing out. I think they'll be there. I think they've got a lot more, they're a lot better than I would say a, a Ross County or a St Johnston. Um, and I definitely think they're better than Motherwell. Um, mm. So I, I'm hoping, I'm fingers crossed for David Martindale. It'd be nice to see his teams get, potentially get European football. That would be nice, for especially for a club like Livingston, do you know what I mean? Nah, it'd be huge for, for Livingston to hopefully push for that even further. Into the into the top six, maybe fourth or fifth, and and get obviously I think the league's that's set. Bad that as well for them as well. I, I kind of like that. I think that's a away kit. Actually, when I was making this last night, they just released their home kit the day. <laughs> so, uh, well, aye, that's a away kit on there. But yeah. into fifth position, mm-hmm. uh, I've went for Aberdeen. Aberdeen last season were absolutely shocking. Any time yeah, I mean, they didn't play us, but. Any like any time yeah, we played them, we just couldn't get seem to get anything off them. But, um. Against everybody else, they were shocking. Tenth, maybe if they continued that form, they were on on track to be down with St Johnston and, and Dundee last season. They were absolutely shocking last year. Um, but they've made a, a lot of money uh, this transfer window, which is good to see for a Scottish club. Um, yeah, absolutely making money. Calvin Ramsey, obviously away to Liverpool for four and a half million. Lewis Ferguson mm. away for two point nine million to Bologna. Uh, Ojo again away to Port Vale sort of trimming the squad Considine as we said about St Johnson but their incomings Anthony Stewart who's their new captain uh, coming in for Wickham in a free transfer uh, centre halfway a, a good deal of experience you know what, uh, you know what about him, you know? of course uh, centre halfway a good deal of experience uh, playing for Wickham all the years up there near enough every year in, in the playoffs and had championship experience as well so pretty good uh, business oh. for him the derby goalie uh, uh, Kelly Roos as well man. Uh, Bojan Miofsky uh, from MTK Budapest I seen he got his first goal yesterday aye. Uh, for the penalty spot aye, penalty, it? and I think Aberdeen have actually went unbeaten uh, if I'm right aye, in pre-season in the, in the cup so far so so far so good uh, for their point of view Liam Scales coming in as well for Celtic uh, mm. Jaden Richardson left mid for, for Notts Forest and Ramadani centre midfielder looks to be probably Lewis Ferguson's replacement and from MTK Budapest again so they've uh, worked pretty well with the, with the Budapest team this season to get a few transfers in and Luis Good Lopez for, <laughs> for Luis Lopez as well for, for Benfica young mm. uh, striker as well so Looks like they've done a good bad business. They've got good funds in for two top players. Um, they might struggle without Lewis Ferguson, though. Uh, Lewis Ferguson's a guy they could always rely on massive, to get massive for them. Get a goal for anywhere to maybe salvage a point or mm. or go and take the victory. So that's going to be a massive miss. Calvin Ramsey, obviously, still young, coming through and applying his trade at Aberdeen, but um, yeah, the, the funds will be well used. I think, as you see, they've brought in some some decent enough players. Whilst also keeping uh, Johnny Hayes, Joe Lewis, obviously still there. Um, David Bates, he seem a little light in the midfield position looking at their, their squad now. Connor Barron, uh, Ramadani and Richardson and Paul Lavara, the only four midfielders apparently at the club. So um, Christian Ramirez had a good season last year. Uh, the American obviously joined, for, I think it was uh, Atalanta or something. Atlanta. Uh, um, and Bajusin as well, the... Holland uh, winger so I think Aberdeen I can't see them doing as bad as they did last year I just think that's I, that just, was think, a for them. 
Aye, that was, it was really poor. Um, I think with the, the appointment of their, their ex manager as well, uh, Stephen Glass, I don't think that really contributed as well. I don't think he'd done too well up here. But Jim Goodwin seems to sort of be finding his feet now after taking over at the end of the season. I think, um, I, I think they'll be on a, a fifth place finish. No, yeah, no, I think they're definitely going to be up there for me anyway. I've, obviously, I've got my I think I've got them one place higher, but um, I mean, mm-hmm. losing Lewis Ferguson and that's, that is a massive one for them. How Roy well was was talking about he but he was for them, um, and then also experienced defenders there as well. They've they've let, let go to Sir Johnston and St Mirren there. So I, yeah, I've seen if they're a bit light in the middle of the park though as as well, mate. That could maybe be a factor in their season as well. But obviously, there's still time in the window for them to recruit players in. Um, but I, you never know. It could be. I don't think though, as I say, they won't finish tenth again. Um, but they've got a, a decent manager who knows the league, so mm-hmm. we'll see where they finish. No, uh, you've got Kilmarnock finishing that one place higher as well. You obviously mm. think the same. Derek McInnes coming in, Kilmarnock going to be tough to beat, get a, a lot of points, and hopefully you see them having a good season. I do have, as I said, um, I do see them having a good season, similar to when I came back up with Robbie Nielsen. I just think they obviously the experience levels of the managers know in the league inside and out, and um, they'll know how to get points at difficult away games, as I say. So I can I definitely see it as an experienced striker up front. You could Kyle Lafferty there who can definitely do it, as I say, do the business for him. I keep looking at this. I know it's not, but I keep looking at that picture and I keep thinking to myself, is that Kurt Broadfoot? But it's not. I know it's <laughs> not. Um, but no, I think they'll, they'll have a decent wee season, as I say. I, don't, I can't see them in the bottom half of finishing mid-table. I see them be up challenging for European places, which Derek McKesson kind of said was his goal. He wants to get them challenging for Europe, um, which is nice to see. It's nice. I personally think it's nice to see other teams getting... Um, a chance to fight and compete for European football hopefully brings the best out and everyone in the league now that there's a lot more European um, positions now so I hopefully um, more teams can start doing doing the job Jack and you yeah, it makes that top six it makes that top six vital now for, well, for teams like your commanders and stuff that's what I'm saying we've, obviously we've, we've put uh, clubs where we're finishing that but I generally think on their day MD can be MD in our league and I think that's what makes it exciting for me I don't obviously we get Negative thing, maybe because we're no royal carpets and what have you like the Premiership. But I tell you what, it's more competitive. And um, for me, anyway, it's more enjoyable sometimes for me. Shock results, just a banner as well. Sometimes we get up here as well. And as I say, hopefully, with the European positions, more teams are really, really competing for each other um, to try and get, get into Europe. No, nah, I hope so. I hope so. Um, into the top four now. Uh, I've got Dundee United there. That's what I was saying. I, th- I was shocked that you had put them so low. I think I just think with Jack Ross, we we keep him sort of the core of their team. Mm. Uh, obviously, apart from I'll, the it, but... I'll be honest with you, I didn't know Jack Ross was managing them there, right? But I'm as I'm saying, any team can finish anywhere in the league. But I on you go, Aberdeen. Sorry, sorry, Dundee. Uh, yeah, I've got, well, I've got Dundee United as we said. Um, Dylan Levitt's a good bit of business for them, keeping that quarry the squad, uh, sort of the same. Tony Watt, obviously, um, is, is there. Charlie McGrew, uh, Ryan Edwards, who scored that goal against his last season at Tannadice in the one each draw. Uh, Ian Harks, as, as you can see on the photo there. Nicky Clark, and I think they've got a decent team, um, and I think I, I think they'll be comfortable maybe in fourth again this season. Uh, you've got Aberdeen, though. You, you, uh, mm. you said you'd get them one place higher, so your thoughts on Aberdeen kind of similar to mine of similar to yours mate but as I say MD MD really for those three kind of teams can probably even Hibs as well sorry can can finish there um, but I just think they won't have as bad a season as they did I just think the management is going to be a lot more better as I say obviously Stephen Glass didn't what did they manage like MLS 2 or something nah I've, it was just really MLS I think I, I don't really don't know where that one came from but I really do feel that Lewis Ferguson is a massive miss for them you know my thoughts on him, I really wish we just went in there, especially for the price and they let him go. Obviously, they would have tried to take more money off of us, but generally thought the boy would have been worth it. And as I say, Cam Ramsey as well, that's one who's, who's obviously a miss for him. But I, I've got him finishing fourth there, mate. But as I say, they can finish anywhere um, in the league. But I, I'm going with Aberdeen there, mate. No. Uh, into the top three now. And I think we all agree. Hearts. Hearts. Hearts are... I think Hearts, country Hearts. miles ahead of all the previous teams we just mentioned. Um, just we we last season done doing so well. Their team was really good actually. Looking at the the side, that Craig Gordon obviously John Sewer at the time, 
uh, Kingsley, uh, Halkett, uh, Beningame, Mackay, Boyce, or uh, Ayla Sims, obviously on loan. They have a really good team. Hearts last season making it at a uh, final as well. And I sort of stamped everybody authority they had on that third position and got themselves guaranteed European football, which okay. is good to see for this year. They obviously go into the Europa League uh, playoffs or qualifying round, and then if not, they're guaranteed to be in the Conference League groups. So very good for Hearts to be excited about this season. Robbie Nielsen's done a fantastic job fantastic over there. Job. Um, Considering I, it was the fans, I think, was it not uh, when they were in the Championship, the fans were kind of wanting to go or something, is it? I remember hearing. I, I mean, I don't think he's ever really been the biggest biggest sort of fan. Uh, the fans haven't really took to him right. too great at times. You can't, but, you, can't, um, you can't complain, as I say, with last season, finishing third, and then now potentially, do you know what I mean, as you just said there, potentially getting conference or whatever you, but I'm sorry, my man Mark Hughes making a decent wee signing for Bradford there again, I'm just saying. <laughs> um, I know, I just just with the way hearts are, I think yeah, I watched a, an interview last season with Robbie Nielsen when it came towards the end of his transfer window and he he was saying he would rather quality players rather than quantity. I think what we all seen for Hearts um, the past couple of years, we, when Stendhal was there, when Craig Levine was there, they were just signing at MD and MD. F- uh, anywhere kind of thing. Yeah, Whereas yeah. Robbie Nielsen sort of been like, nah, I want to keep the squad sort of tight knitted, have a good quality with, without with like, just all the way through it. And and I think he'd done that pretty well last season. And added to it again, I think the incoming here are, are massive for us. Yeah, Lauren for us. Shankland in, a guy that knows the league yeah, pretty well back to Scotland. George Grant, don't know much about him, but when I was reading on the post, uh, when, when they signed him, apparently he's a, a good box-to-box midfielder. Alex Cochran, who was obviously on loan last season. Right, did decent for him. Play Hearts, uh, he done pretty good. So, signed him for Brighton. Kai Rose for Central Coast Mariners. Apparently, the, the Scottish League are just loving going to the Australian League this year and buying really players. Um, I mean, there's a joke in there, isn't there? Get any roles, mate. <laughs> I sort of get roles in. Uh, 600 grand they paid for him. Australian international. Lewis Nielsen. Uh, if you've done the United, uh, a very highly rated centre half as well, and Alan Forrest, as we said. I think the business has been fantastic for Hearts, to be honest with you, with the incomings this year. And uh, obviously, looking at who they've, who they've let go, Aaron McInef, again, away to Australian side, Perth good. Glory, like the Moore, Mihai Popescu, Jamie Brandon, obviously, John Suter came to, came to us, and Jamie Walker away as well. But aye, I think I Hearts are. Uh, Bradford. I wonder Bradford. I think uh, I think Hearts have done some really really good business, and and I think it'll be a really tough team to beat again this year. Definitely, I'm on board with me. I just I don't see MD taking this odd spot for them. I just I really don't. Um, superb goal last season for Jory Borel. Um, hopefully more of that this season. It would be nice. Um, but no, I generally just think Hearts will be solid again and well finished. Third, as you say, bringing Shanklin and all that, and that's that's decent business. A striker, as you said, knows the league can put the ball in the net for him. So. Definitely some competition for places, maybe at Hearts. No, nah, um, hopefully, hopefully that boy Andy Halliday does well. I want to see Andy doing well. Hopefully, I he's got another uh, another couple of seasons there at Hearts, I think. So it's good for him to be established One himself in a good squad. Um, yeah. so I th- think maybe the only negative towards Hearts is the fact that they're going to be playing European football guaranteed football. up to December. How do they yeah. cope with that with such mm-hmm. such a tight knitted squad as you we said? Yeah. Nielsen likes to keep it quality over quantity will they be able to manage that with Europe as well uh, it'll be interesting to see um, but I think Hearts are, are probably good enough to to withstand that and hopefully they do well in Europe as well No hopefully they do mate uh, just before going to number two uh, that is a good point to bring up they could potentially maybe struggle with that I know that was something you were saying to me about but I'm just going to keep it in third Nah I think it's see, just... see before uh, we get on to this sort of interrupt again mate but come on Everybody knows what kind of podcast this is, but a Rangers podcast. No, of course. Know, but then, I mean? of course, when you're going into every season, you think you're going to win the league. Uh, that's just how it is if you're a Rangers or Celtic fan. Mm-hmm. We've got Celtic uh, last season's uh, league winners at the second position. I mean, last season, I don't think anybody saw it coming uh, with how, how well Celtic did. Um, at times last year, I think mm-hmm. after that Livingston defeat, they went undefeated in in the whole league campaign, uh, which is as remarkable, especially for a team that's just sort of got together and, and bought into Postacogu's ideas. So, um, I, I always think that way, defensive mistakes in Alan McGregor, but aye, you can't take away from them that they were, they were definitely a good team that gelled together very quickly. Signed some really good players. Um, 
So I kind of take that away from them, but I'm just that's an off point I put out there for you. I know. I think uh, even even if it did come down to McGregor, I think Celtic were still steamrolling no, teams and getting it. the results, and it just yeah. looked at a point where it was nah, they're, they're going to win the league because yeah, of how well they're doing on fantastic form, obviously, and beating them pre season again. Add into their squad, obviously, they made Jota and Carter Vickers permanent there. Uh, Seagrist also coming in for a backup goalie. Bernabe for Lanus uh, for 3.7 million, the uh, Argentinian fullback. And then a couple more recent deals that get done Aaron Moy uh, and Maurice Jens for Lorient, a centre half and a centre mid added to the team. And they've not really lost anybody who's no. sort of right with them. They've not had any bids in for, for Juranovic, Abada, um, anybody else like that. So. They've kind of trimmed the squad in a way where they've got already a lot of duds there, yeah, apart from yeah, Tom Rogic, obviously, who and I don't think MD really seen coming leaving the free, so he's still without a club. But uh, they've trimmed their squad, they've sort of kept what um what was good for them last year. Uh, and Celtic look to go again. It's going to be I tough. Know we know it's going to be yeah. tough this season again with Celtic, obviously. We're another year under the belt with this manager who they all seem to buy into his ideas. So um, aye, it's all about knocking them off a top spot and, and regaining the league. No, absolutely, mate. As I say, I think it'll be close again. I really do that. That's what I think is uh, the most enjoyable thing about it now is, as I say, it's, it's very neck and neck now. Um, the actual point I was about to make there is I kind of, I'm just saying, I kind of think Seagrass is probably better than Hart. I just, I know Hart plays because he's the ball with the feet or whatever, but I don't know, I think he's a better keeper than Joe Hart anyway. Joe mm. Hart's a bit of a dud. I don't know. Aye, well, that's my point there. I don't care about him, things. But uh, no, I agree with you. They get rid of some of their duds that they've got there and strengthen their team probably in areas they feel like they just maybe need to be back in there signing two of their star men um, permanently, which was something that they, they clearly wanted and uh, must have done. Um, and obviously bringing the Argentinian in, which I'm very excited to see, just to, him as a player really, to see what kind of quality he's got about them. But um, aye, we'll see how it goes, mate. Um, we'll see how it goes. It's going to be. It's going we to know be it's tight again. It's going to be tight. Yeah. I think. All I'm, all I'm saying is, uh, let's go for it. Bring it on. We'll see what happens, and hopefully, um, aye, at the end of the season, we'll sit my smile on our face. But I mean, aye, I've got a good, good wee decent team, and um, we'll see how they do in Europe as well. They seem to struggle with that last season. Just bringing that point up. You can have me for it all you want, but he's did. You struggled in Europe last season, and he's can maybe make the point that um, oh, the league was more important anyway. The league's always more important, but European nights that are unforgettable. They're they're also important. Um, and Celtic seem to want to play in all three competitions last season. So nah, we'll, yeah. we'll see what we we'll see what they do this season. Obviously, they've got guaranteed Champions League, so. They're in that, that step up in, in the, the big competition now uh, that we'll be obviously fighting to get into as well. But we'll see how they do there. Uh, last season, obviously, Europe wasn't their, their strong suit. But um, I, I th- as you say, I think it'll be tight again. I think uh, Celtic are, are a well drilled team. They know they know what they're doing. They know what their objectives are. They're going to be neck and neck with, with us for, for every trophy in Scotland. So, um, aye, it'll be interesting to see how, how Celtic do this season again. I think it'll be a... As you see, I think Maybe it'll be close. Again, person. Is that that damn belly boy that they were all raving about? Like a world beater? Nah, he's away. Well, permanently? Nah. Never really seen him feature for them, did they? Nah, I don't I, I think he, he was injured last season and then, I don't know, I'm guessing the manager didn't really fancy him or, mm. or whatever, but he never really was broke he's... into the team as we all thought. Uh, uh, interesting. I see they're, they're loaning out their... Uh, the keeper they paid a lot of money for there again as well. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> big bar they for him again? Five million odd. So I wish they'd I kept do. him. Uh, big yeah. pop of them hands and goals, but uh, get Celtic yeah. get second position for the trophy. Obviously, I believe Rangers will, will regain the the SPFL trophy this year. I think um, just for what I seen last season, not only in Europe but in general with with Geo, I just think all the players are sort of buying into his ways. I think he's a great tactical manager. I think uh, no matter what each game needs, he'll make the big decisions and the big decisions more than likely are going to pay off. Uh, and and that, that European experience will, will stand us in good stead. We don't like not winning the league, so I think I would like to think the squad will be really up for us this season and winning the league back. It was obviously good to get the Scottish Cup at the end of the year to get that bit of silverware, but 
we need to be pushing on all fronts this season, um, and most importantly, hopefully, the league, uh, getting that back. Obviously, we've covered on our channel uh, the business that we've done, but um, a couple more loanees that went out: Cole McKinnon away to Partick Thistle, Josh McPay could be out in loan. That's the see the one with Cole. That's the one to watch. I think he'll have a really good season. Yeah, I, I, th- I think so. Uh, Tony Weston went out there as well. I didn't have any space to put him in, but Partick Thistle seems to be the, the club where we just send our youngsters to for, for the experience. Obviously, Allegri was there as well last season. So, uh, um, he's away Falkirk season, isn't he? Yeah, he's away Falkirk, so best of luck to him and, and all the youngsters that are heading out on loan. But uh, we'll still wait to see what the transfer window has to serve up. Uh, obviously, it's still key that we keep Kent and, and Kamara, uh, Morelos, all, all at the club. See, um, I can't see any of them going. Look, we were both at the, the Spurs game. I thought Kamara was man of the match, fantastic, done a fantastic job in the game. Um, obviously, hearing Gio talk about um, Morelos' contract situation uh, the day with the training as well, saying that. He's pretty confident that they'll get it done over the line. Fingers crossed. Everton crossed really with that because, I mean, it, it, he'd be gutted to lose Alfie on a free. And the captain, the skipper's committed. He, he's here for, I think, for the rest of his career. I really do believe that. Um, and I just, overall, I just, I'm liking the signings we're making. Seems more, um, more of a togetherness. I feel just with some of the players that have come in, Two of the Welsh boys seem to be getting along really well. I'm hoping Davies and that start to come into the team. Um, obviously he played in the friendly, didn't he? Behind closed doors. Mm, nah, he was he was playing yesterday. I saw the highlights of that. Uh, just this morning. Well, that, that's what I'm saying. It's good to see that the 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 new signings are coming in and they're they're never getting into the squad. They're doing. Do you know what I mean? They're getting along with people. They're probably getting feel uh, sorry made to feel welcome and what have you, which is really important because you wouldn't want to halfway through the season you still don't feel comfortable in the squad. That's maybe which was the disadvantage for something like Cedric as we talked about because he locked locked down and all that kind of stuff. Um, but just overall, I mean, this is a quest- two questions I would ask obviously neutral fans who have our, um, obviously don't support Rangers and Celtic and maybe are watching the podcast because we're talking about uh, their teams. Two questions, who's a better manager, Gio or Ange? And the other question, who's better, Conor Goldson or Carter Vickers? Um, as a Rangers man, you know my answers. Um, no, no, we'll we'll leave that open to the public that may be watching uh, uh, a few different We'll leave that open to them, but just oh, on the eyes, mate, I really do. I'm the same as you. We need to be kicking on now. Um, unforgettable in Europe last season. Obviously got so close. Um, and then same with the league. I'm praying that John McLaughlin's the number one. I don't care at this point. I know it's um, something that everyone's saying. See these things I do, Jack, where I predict the future. Um, I just I think John McLaughlin needs to be the number one. John Suter, I'll take time for me to get around and watching him in that friendly. I'm, I mean, I know he's not getting the pace in the back of the legs. And I said to you, how did Leon Balogun not get another year? Um, for me, I'm I'm no it'll be Davies, but I also wouldn't mind looking at Sands playing centre half as well. My boys never put a foot wrong. I'll be backing them all season. God bless America, bro. Obviously, we've lost Joe and Calvin. And the more and the more I thought about the Joe Rebo one, mate, we've been talking about it off the podcast and that. I do kind of feel Joe took the easy way out. I get it was a dream to play uh, Premiership football and hopefully he goes and gets a bigger move because I do think, as I say all the time, he could have gone played for an Arsenal or what have you. Um, and Calvin, Calvin's going to go and win the Champions League one day. I don't care what Andy says. My man's a, a world-class player. Um, I'll, I'll take all the abuse in the world for that because he is. And it's nice to see the youngsters as well going out and um, going and getting themselves minutes. First team, Partick Thistle. I just always instantly think, when I think of Partick Thistle, mate, I instantly think of their manager just go, I thought we were absolutely dug, mate. <laughs> just nah, interested yeah. as that. Um, and I'm looking forward to watching the boy we sing for Bayern as well. He seemed a bit decent on the ball, um, a lot more intelligent. Lawrence, mate, you've proved me wrong already. I should have. That was one where I put my foot in it, and I can hold my hands up. Do you know what I mean? That's the kind of podcast me and Jack have here. I can hold my hands up and say I got that one wrong. Just they played for Barbie, didn't they? But uh, we'll get over that. Um, mm-hmm. But this youngster coming in, the um, Bershiktas. My God, I, he kind of came in any sooner. I can't watch Barisic anymore. See, watching him in that Spurs game. She almost injured himself just trying to do stuff to impress the crowd. It's like, bro, stop. You're try hard. Stop, please. Let's bring this youngster in. I'm really excited to see this guy play. And then the boy we've signed up front. I think he, he looks decent. Looks like he could uh, do the job for his in difficult game, uh, way game. Sorry. With my boy Kimar, um, I'm, I'm, ah, I'm really concerned for him. 
just being injured and no being a part of it. Do you know what I mean? There could be a potential, I feel like, maybe not if this window, but maybe in January. I said to you, same thing with Katic. I think Katic might be going in January as well. You never know. Just might stay to make up the numbers. Um, but overall, I think we've got a we got a decent squad to go at it. Matondo, or what, if I'm saying his name right, I do apologise if I'm not. That guy is going to light the league up. I really do believe that. But it's all about how we do against, I think, the difficult away games. Um, Kamarnock away on that park. Dundee have been kind of challenging for us as well. Hibs always gives a good go, so you never know. But um, hopefully it improves. Um, and I'm hoping my manager's he's smiling at the end of the season with us, Jack. Yeah, personally, I just think um, I think Gio's calmness as a manager... I know a lot of people might not like that and might no, want like the manager to be more it. animated and such, but mm. I think his calmness leads to the way we play in the pitch. Uh, to be honest with you, I think him as a manager being able to, as we say, go into different formations, different tactics for different yeah, games. We're, we're going out there to win all the time. The The brand of football is a lot better than it was at the start and, and he's grown into the, into the mm. position as Rangers manager and I just feel with we, the competitors, Celtic, I think Postecoglou still only really has that one way of playing, and I think that's only going to. It's, it's, I yeah, think that I think you'll burn out with that eventually. Yeah. It's just so, it's so uh, demanding that style of play, and I just feel like he's got that one style. Whereas Gio and and our, our team, I think we can. The is there were adaptable, as I say, dropping the the defence for a three and a five sometimes. Do you know what I mean? So it's it's there as I say, just playing against Celtic. All you're having to do is tell. Um, Matondo there I'm, I'm never saying his name now in case I get it wrong no <laughs> you're right Matondo to tell Matondo and uh, Kent well, listen boys stay up there we'll just get the ball to you you're through that's generally what I'd be telling him but you never know man um, I'm not going to root, root Celtic off as I say I do think it'll be a lot more competitive this season which is good it's exciting for the neutral who maybe just enjoys looking at the Scottish game I know there's a couple of Americans at Ibrox um, there for that friendly there so it's good to see that there is eyes on our game. It might not be highlighted all the time, but it's good to see that there's um, international eyes watching the Scottish game as well. So it's good for maybe them if they're neutral fans that the league's competitive enough. Um, but for me, I'm just hoping that uh, we can we can go one step further and, and bring it bring it back home, man. No, I think again, I agree with you. I think. Uh... This has been one of the best windows in terms of where we've strengthened because I think we all knew, right? John Souter is going to come in. He's going to he's going to strengthen the back line. Cholak, we needed an our striker. Can we? How last season went? Tom Lawrence fills that Aribo gap. Uh, an attacking midfielder, Rabbi Matondo, finally a right winger. Malik Tillman again playing that same sort of position as Tom Lawrence. Davies in and and Yilmaz, who's soon to be announced. Uh, as a as a Calvin Bassey replacements and we've we've spent the money and we've we've invested in the side we've backed Geo and and I can't want any more. Uh, we'll see how it goes. Uh, obviously with the league it's opening. To load up the video the now, Jackson. Load up the, the Ross Wilson many man video. Load up the now. <laughs> Just the way we've spent and as you said, mate. Like I did, mate, I did say here at Spurs game. I do think Lawrence is going to get like three red cards this season. Do you know what I mean? Reckless, like just stupid red cards against teams. There's no need to. I can see it already in my head. Um, but I just think we've strengthened and as you say, made smart business in the areas where we've needed to do that. So, uh, as I say, I'm no, I'm no convinced, but I'm not going to write him off straight away. Obviously, it's still pre-season time, league's just starting. The passing accuracy for the guy's phenomenal, but I'll give him that. It's just tracking back him, like, bro, if somebody's away, you're done. Um, but I, hopefully, man, fingers crossed, we can, we can do something special again this season. Um, also with European football coming up as well we want to get in the Champions League and we want to try our best um, to compete in that as, as far as we can go and get more money into the club as well Nah, this is what it's all about uh, looking forward to the season starting on Saturday um, and over the weekend as well and it's just good to get it back and it'll be important for us again moving on to Champions League qualifiers to get off to a good start Um Pre-season has been pretty good so far. I've been pretty promising with a lot of the, the new signings and, and just the way we've been as a team. So it's a, it's an exciting time to be a fan of Rangers and, and I just feel that we're going to really go up a level this year and we're going to be even harder to beat and we're just going to get the results we need to get, um, which will hopefully lead us at the end to be to be the champions. So, aye, that was that was the SPFL predictions for 2022-23 for season. 
Um, I, I, again, let us know your thoughts. Do you agree with us? And you disagree on? Let us know in the comments. I answer the two questions. If you're a, a neutral, or if you support Ross County, as I say, who's the better manager, Gio or Ange, and who's the better centre half, Connor Goldson or Carter Vickers? Get a wee poll. Get polls going in the, the comments there, Jack. And there you go. People think. Um, I just appreciate you uh, tuning in, supporting me and uh, Jack. Obviously, Jack does put a lot of work in with these power points here, so I do really appreciate it. And um, I do apologise for the setup so far, guys. It's no, no what I want yet, but the the laptop's getting fixed. That's all I'm saying. And, um, I told me I wanted to make a wee appearance today, so I thought let the dog make a wee appearance. <laughs> Aye, good stuff. Um, and we'll be back um, hopefully this week at some point, previewing the Levy game in more detail. As we get more information that comes out for, for the squad and um and the manager. So until then, see you later.